Okay. So three of you guys was were here was in the class last week. Yeah. Excellent. All right. By the way, introduction. Who are who are is new? Let me see the new people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Who are all the other people are? It's not going. It's not going. It's not going to be distracting for them. No, no, no. no yeah. Why, boss? Well, because I like for the other guys to sit out in front of the computer. The guy who was in front of the computer yesterday, he was, last time he was very helpful. <laughs> you should have put your students. You should have put the students in the back so they can be comfortable doing their job. <laughs> Well, All right, guys. Um, what's your name again, young man? I'm Roberto. Oh, Roberto, good. Roberto, let's let's dive right into the training. Is Jala there? Jala, uh, not come yet. Okay. So let's dive right into the training. Let's dive now. All right, guys. By the way, by the way, we have a big job in Marusia. We have a big job. We have a over fifteen thousand dollars job right now. So I'm trying to build a team for that job, and uh, I can erase a show the two people who are who are there last week. You guys are part of that team already. If you have been in the class for two weeks, then you should be part of that team. I have a. I'm working with a with with a veteran um, installer in Morovia. And he's going to be supervising the entire project. So you guys are going to be there learning and working along with him. So you can get a hands on experience. This, this is, this is not book painting. I don't do too much of book painting. I do. I like practical stuff. Uh, hands on. More people learn by hands on. If you do things practically, you tend to grasp the concept faster. So, uh, I'm not analytic. I'm what I call practical. There are two types of human analysis. There are people who learn by reading. They can sit down whole day and read, and they learn that way. There are people who learn practically. They have to touch something physically to learn. That is the reason why in Africa, education is biased. What I mean biased in the sense is that you have an educational system that is analytic, not practical. So most students, especially in Liberia, if you don't know how to sit down and crank a couple of books, and then you are not considered a smart student. On the contrary, in developing world, uh, students are given the opportunity to expound the exposés. You can use your mind based on your ability to learn. If you are somebody who are mechanical, you have what they call mechanical analysis. Your brain, you have to work with something with your hand physically to do it. There are people who are built, who have invented greater things in the world that have never one day had a degree because the, the society gave them the opportunity to maximize their full potentials. And this is some of the things that we are driving into. This is my dream. My dream is to build a team of young people that will sit down one day and say, hey, I think I want to develop a solar car. Or I want to learn how to design a, a, a model and, 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 and invent something of my own since I already know how to install or configure solar system. Think beyond the box. You must learn to always think beyond the box. When I was growing up in school, I was never the smartest kid in my class. The reason because I never took interest in things that were not important to me. If the subject was not important to me, forget about it. I, I, my mother knew that. If I didn't like this subject, it's not something I'm going to use, I didn't bother with it. But I'm saying, don't be like me. I was stubborn. Don't be like me. Um, it's Liberia, but it worked for me. I came to America, it worked for me because I knew what I wanted at an early age and I pursued it. Some people, uh, we have to go to college first or second year before they even know what they want. It is important to know what you want by the time you are in ninth grade, if you are in education assistant, you must know what you are good at. If you're somebody who are literally, you like to read, you must know that you would do well in the art field. You could be a good lawyer, you could be a social worker, you could be a, a, a psychologist. If you're somebody who is mechanical, then you look at things that relate to that area. So that's just what I wanted to talk about before we dive into our training. With all no further ado, I'm going to be diving right into our training today. So, young man, I want you to read what you see on the screen. The Solar Energy International, the Power Factor. Power Factor. Is anybody in that class there that is in the 40s? 
Is there anyone in that class that is in the 40s? Oh, no. Okay, no. So, all right, so all you guys are young men for me. Excellent. So re re let, me, re let, me, re let me hear you. Power factor. Power factor. So today, our training, we're going to backstep a little bit. Last week, we were talking about analysis. We we're talking about uh, load analysis. That's what we did last week. But we're going to backtrack a little bit to discuss the power factor. Then we go back to what we discussed last week. Last week, we were, doing, we were doing load analysis, and you guys had a blast. I enjoyed the class. It was beautiful. You all practicalized uh, what we were talking about. You all did your own analysis. Did anybody went home and did anything practical on their own? Anybody kind of practiced on their own uh, to compare loads? Anybody did that? That was very helpful. Yes. Yeah, okay. All yes. right. Anyone did that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You get all about me, what? All right. So y'all did your homework. Yeah. I'll tell you to take a picture of phone where and send to me on on WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I'm gonna start giving you guys exercise at the end of the class that y'all can take home and practice as well. Okay. Um, let me move on. So we're talking about power factor. Appearance power VA, the real power watts. And the reaction power VA arrow. So when I say power factor is a very important aspect when it comes to anything that has to do with electricity. B8 renewable energy, B8 uh, uh, traditional electricity, B8 the grill, the grill system, B8 wind turbine. Power factor matters. It's important to understand the power factors. I'm going to do a lot of reading. Um, let me see here. Let's move on to your learning objectives. Uh, about to read the learning objectives. Learning objectives explain the relationship between real power, apparent power, and active power. Perform basic power factor calculation. Excellent. So we're going to be explaining relationship between the real power. When I say real power, what are you talking about? Anybody can just. Real power is the power of what the load are going to be handling. Okay. So we're going to go further and we, I mean, explain it in de details. Let's, let's speak about this. Learning objectives for this lesson, I described that we're going to describe the power factor, explain the relationship of real, apparent, the active power, performance, basic power factors. We perform basic power factors calculations. All right. This is the power triangles. With the analogy in the previous slide, you may now begin to understand the difference in power usage between the load, the loads with PF uh, equal to one and load with PFE less than one. So what do I mean by load with P with load with, with power factor? There are electrical appliances that 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 requires the requires what it costs. That require that is very important to understand the power factor of those appliances. Uh, let me go to the power factor here, real power times watts. So this right here, triangle is just showing the calculations. Don't bother yourself when we go further. This will be very explicit. I know it kind of seems like a rack of science right now, but we're going to be able to break it down as we proceed. In the DC resistive load PF, which is a power factor, equals one. Powers then does work, W. Power then does work, the W, that's the sound. Power supply from source is a VA. All power is doing work, VA arrow equals zero. Inductive and cap capacitive loads, the PF, the power factor, we can do less than uh, one. Power that does work, power supply from source. All right, those are all things that good to read. The common, the components of power that actually does work in the load is calculated is called the real power. So real power is a component of power that actually does work in the load. It's called a real power. When we're talking about load, what are we talking about? We talked about load last week. What do you mean by load? All right, so the load, yes. Yeah. So the components of power that actually does work in the load is called a real power, and it is measured in watts. On the slide, real on the slide, real power is represented by the blue lines. So 
So all the blue lines you see in the slide here it are the real power. Let's move forward. For example, a system wax incandescent light bulb. Who all know an incandescent light bulb? Yeah. So for example, a system wax incandescent light bulbs, a 20 watt CFL or a 400 watt uh, vacuum. So these light bulbs have something called the power factors. So if somebody says, can you name a load that has a power factor? One of the things to consider is the light bulbs. Every homes that has electricity, the first one of the first thing that it will be using is light, which is light bulbs. Not so. Yeah. So light bulb has power factor. When you're calculating a system, you have to take into consideration that the light bulbs have power factor. Now I'm gonna write that down. So let me write it. I'm gonna keep all this information first. If you get a pen, write y'all down too. So the first thing we see the light bulb has a power factor. So a light bulb has power factor, right? So we have one, one, one load that has power factor here, which is a light bulb. This is the amount of power that, that does work in each load. CFL and, vac and vacuums are load with a power factor. Now who know a vacuum? A vacuum is used a lot in the uh, developing world to clean the carpet. Yeah. So the vacuum, you vacuum your house. It used, it's, a, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like an electrical, uh, it sucks the dirt from the carpet. So a vacuum used has a power factor. So if, you're, if you're, you are doing a system, you're designing a system, and your customer tells you, oh, I have a vacuum to clean my carpet. Then you also know that there is a device here that has a power factor. You understand me? Yes. You have to take that, hold on one second. You have to drop that down. That, oh, I have one, one device here, so I have one light bulb. Two, we have what? What's the next, what's the next load that have power factor? Uh, thank you. Okay. The vacuum have power factor. All right, let's move forward. A load with a power factor less than one. So they will require an additional amount of power over the 20, over the 20 watts or the 40 watts from the source in order to operate. And this additional power is going to be held back. On the other hand, an incandescent light bulb is, react, is resistive load, which has a power factor equal one. So what is the difference between the vacuum and the CFL light bulbs. The first one has a power factor that is less than one. And the other one here, the uh, incandescent light bulb has a resistive load, which has a power factor of one. Remember that. Uh, the system wide incandescent light bulbs, uh, the CFL, the 40 watts, uh, the 400 watts vacuum, they have a power factor, but that power factor is less than one. You got it? Yeah. Now, they are, we also have the, which one is the one part? Let me see right here. Hold on a second. Let me put my track. Losing my part. All right. Uh, require additional amount. The other hand, on the other hand, an incandescent light bulb. Light bulb is a resistive load, which has a power factor of one. What is the power factor of an incandescent light bulb? Uh, I know, but it's, it's, it's one. one. So it, it's a resistive load, resistive load. Remember that. So it's an incandescent light bulb. Write that down, I N. So we have that. That power factor is one. Uh, the vacuum is less than one. All right, and we continue. The power factor that is supplied to a load but does not perform work, the power the power head back is called a resistive, a re reactive load. So the power factor that is supplied to a load 
but does not perform works. The power held back is called a reactive load, and it is measured in reactive volt amperes, or the VA arrow. On the slide, reactive power is represented by the green line. So we go back up to the slide. So reactive power, you see the one with the green lines? Those are reactive power, power that is held back by the load. So those are reactive power. You see the green lines? Yeah. Huh? Am I increase the zoom? Yeah. Okay. See now? Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. So we have the reactive power factor of VA arrow. So this is reactive. The real mm -hmm. power is represented by the blue lines. That's real power. The amp the amperent power is VA, the total power supply from the source VA. So that's the chart. It's uh, a, 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 a triangular chart. So that's what they are showing you. The reason why they show you this, say for example, some of you, I can tell, full tell that some days you could be in this country. I was one day in Habel, just like you, never thought I'd come to America. God provided me an opportunity, I came here. So you never know where the wind gonna blow you. When I was a boy, my mother used to say to me, learn to speak English. I used to get angry about it. But over the years, it had worked well for me in developed world. If I didn't know how to communicate, I wouldn't get a job in, in America. So you don't limit yourself in life because you do not know where the wind may blow you. Where life has a way that it has a wind that can blow you anywhere. So say you were, you, were to, you were to live in America and you got a job as a, a, a technician or as a designer. And you see this kind of a chart. You know definitely now you have learned, though you're in Liberia, but you have learned that this is a reactive, this is a real power. Anywhere you see on the on the on the plan, you, if you see the green lines, you know that those are reactive power. When you see the blue line, you know those are the real power. When you see the uh, uh, orange line, you know those are the appearing power. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So that continues. The power that the power that is supplied to a load that does not work that does not perform works work the power held back is called a reactive power. I just read that it is measured in reactive volt, which is called the amperance or the VA arrow. The VA arrow on the slide, reactive power is represented by the green line. There is no reactive power VA arrow equals zero in load with a power factor of one. So when the power when a, when a load has a power factor of one. It does not have a VA arrow, okay? You might already be guessing that for inductive, for inductive, you, always, you, might, um, you, might, you might already be uh, guessing that for inductive and capac capacitive load, capacitive loads, that is held back, and you might be tempted to add these two together, these two together, or that they should add up to equal one. However, they don't add up just like that. The total amount of power that will actually need to be provided to the load is called the amperent power. And it is defined in foot amperent or VA. If amperent power is represented by the orange line. So you got that the amperent fire is represented by orange line. We need to define our we need to define or calculate the, the ampere power of the load in order to to properly size certain components in the PV system, okay? Like the inverter and the generator. So if you ever PV system need an inverter, who can tell me what is the function of the inverter? Yeah. Yes. The inverter has to the DC current. So the inverter is invite the DC current to AC current. You guys get like, I'm, I know we are out of a clap for your problem. Man. Give, give me a clap. Give me a clap. Give me a clap. So that actually does that. It inverts the AC, the DC current, or convert the DC current to AC current. So in order to size your inverter, you have to take into consideration these things. Why it is important? Somebody tells you, I want you to configure or design a sy system for my house. They got no idea. And you enter the pressing house, 
you begin to first conduct what you call your load analysis. Remember we did load analysis last week? Yeah. You begin to do your load analysis and you notice that this person has uh, an incandescent light bulb. You notice that the person has a vacuum. Then what runs to your mind? Oh, I got to take into consideration that these are load with what? Power factor. Okay. So I can't just say, I can't just add everyone, all the load as the same. No, this is a different load that has something called the power factor. We need to define or calculate the ampering load of ampering, the ampering power of the load in order to properly size certain components in the PV system, like the inverter and the generator. Ampering power is a function of the real power and the power factor of the load. The three variables are related in the following equations. Power factor equals, write the equation down. Can you guys write the equation down? Yeah. The equation is power factor. This is a little bit of physics, okay? Power factor, which is PF equals rear power, rear power, which is W, divided by what? You, uh, a guy in the front, divide by what? Divide by the apparent power. Divide by the apparent power. So that's the formula, which is the VA. So to find the power factor, this is the this is the formula. Power factor equals the real power, which is the what? Uh, yeah, the uh, power factor equals real power, which is the what? Divide by apparent apparent power. Another very useful way to look at this same equation is, see right there, they say appearing, A -P -P -A -R -E, apparent power, that's VA, equals rear power, Divide by PF. All right. Note that this is note that this equation does not help us quanti quantify reactive power VA. Calculating reactive power is well outside the scope of this course and is not directly related to sizing battery-based PV system. So we are talking about battery-based PV system. We are not talking about a uh, a uh, utility grill, a great, a grill, a great, a, a great system that has, I will, will use the utility grill. We're not talking about that. This is a complete battery based system, so which is very, which is what we use in Liberia and Africa and all the part of the world, all of uh, all the countries around the world. In America, more often people use what are called the grill, the grill system. So uh, um, that's what they're saying. In most inductive and, and capacitive load, you will be able to either read the VA directly of the lean plate find it in the technical specification or find the value of the load power factor. Sometimes the power factor may be defined as a PF or as a COS. So that's what they're saying. They're saying some of the appliances will tell you the power factor right behind it. So if you look at a vacuum, the vacuum may be able to tell you right on the name plate. You know, most of the, most of the electronic appliances has a little sticker on the back or somewhere on it that tells you how many watts, it will tell you what the power factor is. You got it? Yes. So this should not really shake your brain. These informations are actually already available. Most of, most of them are available. This is just school. So these are things that I had to go through so you can be familiar with uh, the concept of power factor. Power factor equal one unit, load VA equal load W. Purely resistive cycle, voltage and socket are in phases. Ampere power, VA equal real power. So they're showing another, another graph here. This is a power factor graph for the VA. I want to move straight to the chart. There's a chart here with the calculation of power factor. I like that part. Because we are in summary.
All right. Now look right here. For those of us who like to learn by seeing things, the power factor PF, this is an example. They're showing you a water source. You see what it says, source? Yes. Okay. They give you an example right here. This is a water source. So we have a water source going into a barrel, and the barrel have a faucet. And the faucet supplying the, 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 the bucket for you to drink. So say we have a reservoir, you know, have the, the water to go with the pipe, the, sending water into the reservoir. So the reservoir would be what? Your rear power, not so? Yeah. So this is an analogy. This is called analogy, okay? This is an analogy to show you exactly how it works practically. So we have the source, give you your rear power, which is your reservoir where to keep the water. Then we have your bucket, you bring your bucket, you open the valve, that the bucket, uh, your water go into the bucket. So that's what they're saying here. That's a DC resistive load, PF equals one. Inductive and capacitive load. PF, what that? What sound is that? Is that greater or less than sound? Yes, yes, than PF less than one. Okay, so that's what it's saying. Your source, your reactive power, uh, perform works. Load transformer, motor, CFL, LED. Those are all what we consider are. In, they are all considered inductive and capacitive load. DC resistive load, load hair dryer. Electric water heater, those also come with uh, the power factor of one. Okay, and like you know, people got water heater, they can plug it in the wall and put it in the water. Yeah. Okay. So those things you gotta take that into consideration. That's what we're saying here. Before we get too deep into load analysis in the next lesson, we want to introduce. The concept of power factor, PF. PF is a ratio of the amount of power watts, that is the load needs to run versus the amount of power in volt ampere of the VA, the utility inverter or generator need to provide to run the load. Remember VOT time, ampere equal watts, but sometimes the source, which is a utility, the inverter or generator must provide more VA then the watts required by the load. Power factor, which is a PF, is a ratio that describes a load power requirement in relationship to how much power needs to be delivered by the utility grill or other power sources like an inverter or a generator. For the load to operate, some types of load require more power to operate than what they consume in watts, according to the name plate readings. To understand this, we will first categorize load into two different types. The first category, first category, load with a PF equal to one, include all DC load and resistive load. Resistive load is, for example, a hair dryer, a toaster, or an electric water heater. These loads use resisti re re resistance to create heat and operate. The second category load with a power factor less than one include the inductive and capacitive load. Example of inductive load includes the transformer, the motors. Example of capacitive load include the, the CFL, these are all light bulbs, the LED bulbs, the cap capacitor and conductor is in a socket. Every load uses power to do work. One of, one of them, one of the main differences between the load is these two category is how they use that power to do work. And this is this can be illustrated with the analogy in the slide. What they're saying here is simple. You don't just calculate your DC load when you're when you're designing a system. You have to take into your, your, your AC load. You have to take into consideration your DC load as well. Okay. We are designing a system, taking into consideration your DC load because your DC appliances, your DC fixture or appliances you're going to use most of them will also need current to run. Okay, yeah. so you have to you have to factor all of those in when yeah. determining your system, how much voltage your system need or how many watts your system need. You have to take those into consideration. All these jargons are very easy when we're discussing it practically. So don't get your hair too, don't shake your head too much. Okay, guys. All right.
All right, I want to move over here. All right, there we go. All right, then we go to the practical something right now. PF example and applications. The CFL Bob nameplate reading. So this, how many of you have seen this live bulb in Liberia? Uh, yeah. Is there plenty uh, also? Yeah. You want to do a system, you want to design a system for a house and oh. all the lights in the pressing house is this light bulb, which is called a CFL bulb. So now you know that the need place tells you the bulb here is a 20 watts bulb. Let me say 20 watts. The bulb is a 20 watts light bulb. Additional data is 0 0.22 amps at 12 volt. The real power of this bulb is 20 watts, we agree. The ampere power is 0 0.2 amps. So how do we determine the VA of this light bulb? Can you read that, my young man? The VA will be equal to the VA power divided by the power pi. The VA will be the impairing power, which is 0 0.2A, times the volt. So the light bulb is a 120 volt. That will give you what we call your two, your two point twenty, no, your twenty six point four VA. Okay, you got it. Yeah. I'm gonna go over it again. Yeah. You went to a house to design a system. You notice that almost all the light bulbs in the home has a CFL light bulbs. Okay. The person like the person want a lot of light. They like for the house to be bright. You find out that it has a CFL light bulbs. The, on the nameplate of the light bulbs, it says that the light bulbs are 20 watts light bulbs. You agree? When you're creating your load analysis, how many of you are there for the load analysis class? So you remember we talked about the operating watts? Yes. So the operating watts for this light bulbs is 20 watts. Not so we agree. So it's 20 watts. You got it? Yeah. That's operating light bulb, operating wires. The wattage. So the operating wire is 20, it's 20 watts. But now, that's not all you need to size the amount of PV, the amount of solar panel or wax you need for that light bulb in your system. That's not all. You also need to take into consideration the ampere power. So they're saying on the on the nameplate or on the on the nameplate, it tells you they tell you that the ampere power of this light bulb is 0 0.2 a. They will not tell you ampere. They will just tell you 0 0.2 a amp. You will see it like that. You will see a 0 0.2 a amp, and then you will see the wax say 120 volt. You will see the volt. So what you're going to see on the nameplate, you're going to see the the operating wax, which is 20 watts. You're going to see the arm, which is 0 0.22 arms, and you're going to see the, the volt, which is 120 volt. You got it? Yeah. How now, when, you, when, you, when you're when factoring your system, you have to use that, that 0 0.2 arms, you have to multiply it by the volt to get your two, your 26.4 VA. You got it? Yeah. Uh, All right. I'm going to give you guys one more example. You have a 400 watts vacuum. Write it down. I'm gonna. I want you guys to work it out for me. A 400 watts vacuum. That's the operating watts. Yeah. The ampage. The, the ampage is 0 0.22, and the volt is 120 volt. What would be the power factor for that vacuum? What would be the VA? Yeah, 120 volt. The ampere is 0 0.22. The volt is 120 volt. What would be the ampere? It would be how much? The ampere is 0 0.22. The, 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 the ampere is 0 0.22. The volt is 124. What would be the VA? The VA would be 26.4. Excellent. The VA would be 26.4. You got it? Yeah. It's, the same, it's the same thing. I just confused it a little bit. I just changed the watch. Just, just, it's the same thing. 
So, so the final VA, you, you're not right now, we're not looking at the wax, we're looking at the amperage and the volt. That's what we're looking at. In the name plate, in order to find the VA, we have to find the V at first. We're not talking, we're not finding the power factor for now. We are finding the VA. So we first gotta find the VA before finding the power factor. So in order to find the VA, we multiply the amperage by the volt. So we know now 26.4 is our VA. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. All right, now let's find the power factor now. The power factor equals, how much, what is the wire? What is what the operating watch? No, we're gonna go back to the, we're gonna go back to the light bulb. What the operating watch? The operating watch is 20, 20 watts. Okay, the operating watch is 20 watts. So we use the, 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 the power factor equals the operating watt, which is 20 watts, divide by the VA. You already find your VA. What is your VA? Our V is 26.4. So 20, 20 divided by 26.4. How much is that? Yes, 0 0.76. 0 0.76. And 0 0.76 what? 0 0.76 is our power factor. It's your power factor. So your power factor is 0 0.76. That's the power factor. You got it? Yeah. All right. Now, so the person has, let's assume the person has 20 light bulbs. So write down the person has, oh, no, 20 too much for you. Let's, let's start with five. The, press, the, 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 the customer has five CFL light bulbs. The wattage, the amperage is 0 0.22. The, the volt is 120 volt. But that's five light bulbs. Can you tell me what the V the, the VA will be the total VA for that five light bulbs? The total VA will be equals to 3.8 if, if, if it is part well. You said 3.8? Yeah, 3.8. Mm -hmm. This quality will also be covered in two. Part block is 3.8 because our our total our VA is 26.4 times five. So okay. So 26.4 times 5 is how much? 26.4 times 5 is 100. That 3.8 is, 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 is 124, 100, 132. Do your math. 132. All right. Can you, ask, can you explain to your guys, explain to your friends behind that? Explain what we just did. Yeah. Yes, we take the apparent the apparent factor which is the VA mm -hmm. and then multiply by the amount of bulbs that we have. Uh-huh. And then it will give us our total VA. Okay. So you all right. So what if we had 10 light bulbs? What would be your VA? If we had 10 light bulbs, it would be 264. Are you spotting? <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, why if we had 12 light bulbs? So we have 12 light bulbs, would be 316.8. 316.8, excellent. All right, guys in the back there. Yeah. I'm going to change place. You go in the back, one of the guys come in the front. Okay. I want to make sure everybody got it. Okay. What's your name? Lincoln. Lincoln. So Lincoln, I want you to explain what we just did. Yes, I was falling back, talking so you can, uh, because I know I get it flat. Okay, excellent. That's, that's, you see, that's one of the reasons when you have a class, you have to make sure that everybody understands the concept. Some people are fast to pick up, but I, I'm going to go over it again, okay? So Lincoln, we're trying to find the power factor of our customer uh, 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 light bulbs. Yeah. In order for us to find the power factor of the light bulb, we look at the light bulb, we look at the CFL light bulb the person has in their home. We look at one light bulb to see the reading on it. The light bulb tells us that the, the operating wax is 20 wax. Yeah, you write that down, 20 wax, you got it? Yeah. I got it. 
The light bulb also tells us that the ampage is 0 0.22 amp. That's the ampage. Yeah. Then the light bulb went further to explain to us that the voltage, the volt of that light bulb is 120 volts. So write that down, 120. I get it. Now, the real power, we already know our operating watts, which is 20 watts. Okay. We know our ampage power, which is 0 0.22. Yeah. We know our volt, which is 120 volt. Yeah, yeah. Now, what I need to do, I need to multiply 0 0.22, which is the ampage, times the volt, 124. 26.4. You got 26.4. What is that? 26.4 AV. The VA. So your VA is 26.4. You got it? Yes, yes. In order for us to find our power factor now, we're going to take the wax, the operating wax. We're going to divide that by the VA we just found. Okay. So 20, 20 wax divided by 26.4. What is your, your power factor? 0.76. You run it out. He's very smart. You have a guy, kiss that guy, give me a clap. Now, in grade school, you learn something I call that says you run up to the nearest, the nearest tens. Not so. Yeah, yeah. So, if you would, so let's do this. Let's see right here. So we have twenty divided by twenty six point four. So you have. Uh, I mean, otherwise. Divide by twenty six. No words. Divide by. All right. So you have twenty 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 zero point seven. And the next number up next to the seven is a five. So after the five, we have another seven. Yeah, yeah. If that seven was a four, no. not, it, would, it would be 0 0.75. But because it's, it's more than four, that's why it ran up to the next 10. So it becomes 0 0.76. You got yeah. it, guys? Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's an old old grade school mathematics from uh, so that's that's about it. So they run always run it up. You run it up when you notice that the number be is either the, the number is four in the fourth in the fifth place. Once it's in the fifth place, you run it up to the next number. Now let's move forward now. So we're gonna move to the total light bulb. We have how many light bulbs do we have in total? We got 10 light bulbs, not so. What is the total light bulb the customer have? 10, 10. All right. So the 10 light bulbs, what is the VA for each light bulb? 26.4. We multiply the VA to 26.4 by the 10 light bulb. What is our total VA? So your total V is what? Two sixty four is an even number. You got two sixty four, not so. Yeah, sixty four. All right. Now, how? What? What next? We can do to find our our power factor. To find the power factor, we have to add the total wattage. What is the total wattage? We have each bulb is twenty watts, not so. So each each bulb is twenty watts. So we're going to multiply. 20 watts times 10. How, what is it? 200. 200 watts. So what is your total watts? 200 watts. 200, 200 watts. Yeah. Okay. So.
So now that's number one. So you understand how much you understand what is the power factor for that. For that, we're gonna divide that two hundred and. Let me see. Hold on one second. Two hundred. So much more than two twenty foot times ten equal two hundred watt for the untrained for the untrained eyes for the untrained eyes. So now so we'll see that what it's saying. So we say knowing how to calculate the apparent the ampere power will be very important when there is designing battery-based PV system, as it is well directly at is as it will directly affect the choice of inverter and generator. Why do you need a generator when you're designing PV system? Yeah, we need a generator because sometimes the, the battery will go low because maybe the, the sun. And so we need a generator for our, our inverter charger so that we can able to charge the battery when the battery goes low. So on very cloudy days, maybe maybe the rain like for a couple of days, and you have your depth of your battery have been exhausted. If you have a it, this is an option. If you have a generator, your generator can also charge your battery while you are charge your battery. That's what you are saying here. That's what he just said that your generator can also charge your battery, and then you can use that as well. That's what he's saying. So to size your generator, your backup generator, you're not always going to need a generator. But just in case, let's say in the rainy season, for dry season, I don't think you're ever going to need that. But in the rainy season, let's say in the rainy season, you got a couple of days that are raining too much, and your battery goes, uh, you run your battery, you run your battery off, you're going to need a generator to charge your battery. That's why he's saying here. So to size the generator, you're going to need a battery, a backup generator. That's what they're saying. Knowing how to calculate, that's what I just read. Let me go further. In this example, we have the CFL bulb on the box. You can find this data. 20 watts on the light bulb, around the box. It's sitting around the box, on the box. 20 watts light bulb for 120, 120 volt VAC socket, and the amperage is 2.022. At first sight, this all makes sense. But multi multiply 120 VAC times 0 0.22 amps, and you see this equal 26.4 volt amperage. No, 26.4 watts. No, 26.4 watts. This data is telling you that this CFL will draw 0 0.2 amp at 120 volt, meaning it draw 26.4 VA while the name plate is telling you it consume 20 watts. You got it? Yeah. So you see, I, it, it, sometimes when I read this thing, it's, it's kind of, it, it, it's it beautiful, it hit me. So, if somebody don't know these things and you design your system, you only went by the wax. You look at the wax on the on the back on the on the on the box. You say, "Oh, this is the this is the load it's 20, 20, 20 watts. For getting to calculate to know what the VA is, you run your system. At the end of the day, that's why people having problem with system they are designing locally. Now that they don't have technicians or smart people, they do. It's just these small small things that they are not informed about. You understand me? Yes. It's just this small, small technicality that I'm not informed about. That's why some of us, we spend our sleepless night so that we can train young people or train you guys so y'all can meet up with the international standard. So when instead of them going to Ghana to bring technicians to Liberia to kind of do LEC work, you guys can stand and tell the guys, whatever you guys know, we know it the same way. You understanding me? Yes. Because the, that's, that's what it is. One of the reasons why it's hard for development to come in like rest because we don't have skilled people. If somebody wants to bring a company to Liberia, they ask, do you have skilled workers? When they say skilled workers, they're just talking about somebody like can lift up bricks and put it down. They're talking about people who have technical skills. Say I brought a machine in Liberia to produce this mug. If I'm going to take a, somebody, an operator from like America to send them to Liberia to, learn, to, to, to work there, it's going to cost me the same pay I'm going to pay 20 people in Liberia. That's why I'm going to pay that one person. Because Liberia don't have the technical minds to do these jobs. See, these are the, these are the things that people don't understand. The country my first, you see, India, more company runs to India because India has technical minds. India have people who are good with computer, people who are good in the technical field. So they have the workforce. So if you bring in your company, you don't have to export People that are going to come as expatriates. He already has the technical minds there. It's the same thing Ghana is doing. 
Ghana is developing technical mines locally. So when a company is coming, Ghana has a technical mines on the ground. And that's why we need to dive into if we want our country to get better. So understand that whatever you're doing, you are an ambassador of the future. That's why I consider myself an ambassador of the future. Some days when I'm 70, 80, if I live to get old, I want to sit down and see some of the young people I train. For example, I have a boy I train, my, my friend, he and I went to grade school together. He wanted to be an actor in Liberia. He used to pass around, say he was an actor, pass around, they put a uh, costume in his hair, pass around. After high school, that's all he was doing. He was a friend of mine, but he was a brilliant guy in school. So I told him, I said, Mommy, why don't you come in the computer lab with me? Today, when it comes to IT, I'm not, I'm not two percent as that guy now. He has gone so far that he he's a programmer. He he I mean the things he can do when it comes to IT is crazy. He traveled to Dubai, he traveled everywhere in the world. He's just crazy. But I gave him the fundamental, the foundation. That is why I'm giving you guys the foundation. It is up to you to build on it, it's up to you to develop on it. But my job is to do my best to give you the fundamental you need. Once your foundation is strong, forget about it, bro. I live in America. I work in many sectors, many places. I work with many people that don't have the same pigmentation of my skin, but they respect me because when it comes to a professional level, we can we can we can we can, we can head it out. We can knock it out. My first job in America, I my I, well, my second job, I went to get a job where they needed people to do data entry. So they were, it was a company that needed to ship. They used to ship things. So they needed people who knew how to do data entry. But then my accent in my mouth, I was just from Liberia when I opened my mouth, you said, oh my God, I can't hear this guy. So all the people who were sitting there, the white boys and the this, they were sitting there, I was the only black boy actually. They were sitting there, they were making, they were laughing at me. When we went for the test, they put me behind the, behind the computer. They were typing 10 words, 15 words per minute. I was typing 35 to 48 words per minute. The person who owned the company when they came downstairs and they saw my report, the guy said, but this man can type more than all of you guys here. That's how I got my first job. So when you're learning something, learn it proficiently. Learn it, don't worry about, oh, I'm not making money for anything right now. No, no, from me, bro. Get prepared because when you are prepared, when the opportunity comes, you can knock your chest like a man. You can do like this. Because why? That sleepless night, that time you talk to invest yourself in learning something, it worked for you. And some of us, I made a vow to God that I would train 100 young men in my lifetime and women that would be able to do marvelous in Liberia before I die. That's a, that's a vow I made to God. So that vow, I hold it. I hold it very firmly. I have lived in this country. I'm comfortable. I'm not rich, but I'm very comfortable. I can stay in America for the next 50 years and I die. They put my body, I can pay for my body to be shipped to Liberia and they build a, a nice something and put me in there. I can do that. But what, what does it profit a man? What does it profit a man? One time I was in Habel and I witnessed a guy that brought his body from America and they put him in a big hall. You know that big hall you guys got? And, yeah. the info, and I didn't attend the funeral service, but I saw the program sheet. It was on the ground and I took the program sheet and I read the program sheet. And there were two pages of his, his academic achievements, two pages. And that man never did one single thing in her belt to help anybody. When he was dying, he said, you please carry my body to Africa because Africa is a graveyard. You carry my body to Liberia, Liberia is a graveyard. <laughs> so I made up my mind and I made a vow to God that my, I will not my go home, my, my body will not just be there for the graveyard. Okay, so let's let's proceed, guys. Do you guys understand understand this power factor calculation? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Let's 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 dive. Let's go. All right. So that's what they what we just did. Is what they're explaining here is that Mr. Kotuma. Yes. Welcome, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Mr. Kotuma read about this thing very vibrantly. He did read about it. I think I don't know. Do you guys have the reading materials? No. Yes, but come on, okay. I'll follow you to them. Okay, you uh -huh. follow you to them. You guys have to read the material because that's how I wanted to, yeah. I wanted to read in the week. So when we come to class, you can be prepared, okay? Just the part of the okay. Now, let's look here now. Now you can calculate the power factor of this load using the equation from the previous slide. 
real power, which is the watts, divided by amperes, VA, equal power factor, PF. So we have 20 watts divided by 226.4 VA equals 0 0.7. That's a power factor of this CSL light bulb. So if you are designing a system and you notice that the customer have CS, CFL light bulbs, you say, oh, no. The person says, oh, the light bulb I have, they only use, two, it's just a 20 watts light bulb. You know, some people say, it's just a 8 watts light bulbs. But they don't understand that that light bulb has something called a power factor you got to you got to factor in when designing the system. You got it now, guys? Yeah. Now, let's move to another example. We have a power factor, the PF example and application. So we have a washing machine. This one I'm not doing it. I'm just going to tell you guys on your own. The washing machine has a nameplate reading. The nameplate reading says that the machine is 600 watts. That is the operating wire, 600 watts. You got it? Yeah. Now, uh, the, the, the thing is, they, 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 they tell us, so they just told us what is the power factor of this. They told us the power factor automatically that the power factor is 0 0.8. So here, the tool, the power factor is 0 0.8. So how, how can we find the amps? I want you guys to find the amps. What amps they use to tell you that the, the power factor is 0 Yeah, well, I mean, I want to find the VA. What is the VA? You guys, help me to find the VA. Uh, find the VA. I want to do the VA. So the the, 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 the nameplate tells you that the the the, 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 the wax is sixty watts and the power factor is zero point eight. So tell me, what is the what is the VA? Seventy-five. How much? Seventy-five. 75? What is the VA? 75. The VA is 750. 750. So the VA is 750. So wow. real power is 600 watts. The ampere is 600 watts divided by the power factor. So we equal to what? Our VA is what? 700. 50. Clap for yourself, guys. Clap for you guys. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. You're doing great. You're doing really good. You made me feel real good. So, in another example, in another example, says you need to power a washing machine with a battery based PV system. The nameplate states that this device is a 600 watts load with a power factor of 0 0.8. To calculate the, the, amp the amperes power, which is a PA, required by this machine, real power, which is 600 watts, divide by power factor which is 0 0.8 we got what 750 va you got it guys yeah. be aware be, be aware some load may have a power factor as low as 0 0.5 if a va or power factor for the particular load are not provided cons consult with the manufacturer so they're just telling you sometimes will be as low as 0 0.5 uh that is all right, now we have another more example, power factor. What is this, why is this important? Power source, the inverter, the generator, power source must, must supply total amperage power, not just watts or real power to load. Load analysis must take power factor into account. So say you have a, a motor, you have a motor that pumping water into your pump, into your reservoir or something, those things have power factor. The CFL light bulbs, those have power factors. You got to take all of those into consideration. That helps you to be able to know how much of an inverter you need, how much KVA generator you need uh, 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 to charge your battery. Having a basic understanding of power factor is important when designing a battery-based PV system. Knowing, knowing power factor exists for some of all of the load. And understand how it affects the choice of inverter and or generator will help help in designing a battery-based system that will continue to provide power for all load. 
Under all circumstances, doing a power of load analysis, power factor for all load must be taken into account. All right? Doing the, the power of load analysis. If you're doing a power of load analysis, power factor needs to be taken into what? Account. Remember, all DC load and resistive load, like toaster and condensing light bulbs, have a power factor equal to 1.0 inductive load like transformer or things with motor and capacitive load like CFL or LED light bulb generally have a power factor of less than one. During the, during the, during the load analysis, the amount of ampere power, which is the VA, required for the load to operate must be considered in order to properly size the inverter or the generator. Do you understand all that reading I did? Let me explain it. They are saying that Based on what we just went through, the most important thing to understand is that you need to know the VA and the power factor to be able to, be able to size your inverter and your generator. You don't need that information to size your PV system, to, to me, your, your, your PV models. You don't need those information for the PV model. The PV model, you need what we, offer, what we did last week. Remember we did a load, load analysis? Yeah. The load analysis calculation we did last week, and we had what? Wax hour what? We had a total, the average to the, to the, to the you remember what we did last week? Yeah, that yeah, is the yeah. information. Yes. That is the information. We're going to go back. Don't worry, we'll go back to that. But that's the information you need for your, to know how many solar panels you need. But this information you need to know how big your inverter needs to be and how much of a kill VA generator you need. Okay? That's what this is all about. All right, guys. All right, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you guys uh, ten minutes of break. Yeah. And we'll come back and we'll go back into into doing a, a, a load analysis, including the power factor. So, uh, figure you can shut it down. Yeah, I'm going to do it. 